Ladies and gentlemen, I see we have a quorum, and I appreciate those uh, that are able to attend. I, I realize there are about uh, 12 concurrent meetings going on right now, so thank you very much for your service to the Ways and Means Committee. I call this uh, meeting of the full committee to order. We have uh, three hopeful, hopefully uh, short first readers today, and the chair recognizes the uh, the gentleman from uh, Representative Hexall. What district number are you? Uh, what district number are you? The gentleman from District 62, Representative Joe Hextall, to tell the committee about his House Bill 1355, please, sir. Thank you so very much, Mr. Chairman. It's a pleasure being before you and having a chance to give you a very brief overview of this, this bill, and I'm sure you're going to accept it because you like me very much. I'm sure that we're going to be okay. With that in mind, bill, House Bill 1355 is East Point's attempt to become competitive with the other municipalities in the area. Currently, East Point's uh, ta hotel, motel, and tourism taxes at 3%. We're asking that we be allowed to go to 8%, which we know how the breakdown, of course, in the law is that we have to spend 1.5% for promotion and 1.5% for product reduction. So we have all the, all the facts that we know what we have to do. And, of course, we're looking forward to also our, our historic site in East Point. We're looking forward to developing that so that we, again, can have a facility that will attract tu tourism but also preserve a historic facility that will be used by mayor and council and for recreational purposes. So I'm asking the chairman in a very, very, in a committee in a very brief manner to please support us in East Point so that we can become competitive in the tourism and promotion business in, our, in South Fulton Place. We, we thank you, sir, for that, and we're going to assign that to our public finance subcommittee. Are you and telling you, me I'm not getting a vote on it today, Mr. No, Chairman? sir. No, oh, sir. Okay. <laughs> I don't get a vote on any of mine the first day, but I will tell you that we will certainly try to arrange a hearing as expeditiously as possible. If you will contact uh, uh, either of these three gentlemen, uh, Chairman Chuck Martin, Chairman Tom Rice, or Chairman David Knight. Any of those three gentlemen can uh, can arrange a hearing from you. They're all chairman of that subcommittee, and we're anxious to. Tom, Chairman Tom Rice, Chairman Chuck Martin, or Chairman David Knight, and uh, they will. The reason we have three is because everybody's so busy. We're hoping that somebody will be able to do it whenever it's convenient for all concerned. We look forward to hearing from you. We really do. Thanks for coming today. Is Representative Taylor with us? I don't see Representative Taylor. He has a special purpose public safety local option sales and use tax. Um, and that's House Bill 1382. And since he's not here to tell us much more about it today, we'll go ahead and assign it to our sales tax committee, our subcommittee, and we'll let him know accordingly. Chairman Stevens, is it? Is that the right one? Is that you, sir? From your place, what number? Tell us about your House Resolution 1652, if you would, please, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. House Bill 652 is a proposition to uh, place in a constitutional amendment a uh, $1 tobacco tax that would then be dedicated to the very product that's causing the health care costs to all the states, all the um, uh, taxpayers in this state, which is uh, well over $2 billion uh, subsidy right now going on um, to our own constituents. This dedicates this uh, dollar, specific dollar, to the health care costs so that we can draw down uh, federal dollars to the tune of about $1.2 billion. And uh, this places it in front of the voters of this state so that they make the decision for us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We look forward to uh, seeing that uh, legislation move on. It's going to be in our public finance subcommittee, and I, I expect those chairs will be anxious to get the hearing done on that. Uh, Representative Taylor, uh, uh, would you tell us about your, briefly if you would, your House Bill 1382 as a first reader? What, 14? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this bill, in the city of Atlanta, we currently pay an extra penny on the sales tax that goes to school construction. That penny expires in 2012. This bill would basically use that penny for non salary public safety expenses in the city of Atlanta. Okay, we're going to assign that to our sales tax subcommittee 
and those chairs are Chairman Martin Scott, Don Parsons, or David Knight. Hopefully they'll arrange an expeditious hearing for you as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, on to second readers, um, matters that are before the, cons uh, the Committee for Consideration today. And we have with us, uh, hopefully, I, I don't know that I saw, is Senator Goggins with us? Yes. We're glad to have, oh, there you are, behind there. You please, Senator Goggins, come forward, and you're recognized to uh, tell this committee about your Senate Resolution 277, please, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and also to the committee. I appreciate you taking the time today to, to hear this bill. Uh, we're working off today the House Committee on Ways and Means substitute to Senate Resolution 277. It'll be LC 189060S, and that's the substitute we're working off of today. Uh, we've been, I've been before this committee quite a few times on this issue, and I think each of the members uh, that, that's before here today understand a tremendous amount about trauma, the, the need for trauma. And unfortunately, with the trauma system that we have today, way too many lives are needlessly lost each year just because of the inadequacy of our system. And everyone understands that we need this. I think they all agree that it's needed. But the question is, how do we fund it? How do we pay for that? And in this economic atmosphere that we find ourselves in, I think you would probably agree that it's going to be quite some time, many years, before we probably find any funds in the general fund to be funding uh, a trauma system. And so I'm here before you today to talk about uh, establishing a dedicated funding source for our trauma network that would go to the trauma fund, trauma trust fund. And it is a uh, $10, what I call trauma fee, uh, each year on a passenger vehicle uh, that would be used and this money would be dedicated. This is a constitutional amendment that would go before the people of Georgia to allow them to decide whether or not they want to fund a trauma system. Um, Mr. Chairman, I will at this point yield for questions. Uh, any member of the committee have any questions for the author of this uh, very important legislation? Uh, Representative Battles. Yes, just to, just to clarify, this, this $10 uh, trauma, trauma care uh, charge, it says passenger vehicle. Now, is this every motor vehicle uh, or is it just uh, cars, trucks, those that... Or does it include, I notice in the, in, it, it includes pickup trucks, motorcycles, and all. That, that's every vehicle that's motorized. Passenger vehicle. It, will, that it will would pay not this include $10. semi trucks and so forth. This is passenger vehicles that carry 10 or fewer, and then also your pickup trucks, motorcycles, sports utility vehicles, but it, and passenger vans for 10 persons or less but it would not include semi-trucks. Okay. I, I just wanted to see if there was something that was being excluded and why are the, um, the semi-trucks being excluded? And we decided from a standpoint of businesses, that's what most of them were carrying on the business, uh, that we did not want to add an extra burden onto businesses. Okay. Thank you. Those are very good questions. Thank you for those, Representative Battles. Uh, I've got several others and one of my own just in the meantime. Um, and I remember from last year, but I don't remember the number. What is the expected amount of money this will generate toward our trauma network in the state? I've estimated or got from uh, research around $82 million. Uh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Uh, 19, is that uh, Chairman May? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. How much are we currently, and I may have missed it, I apologize, are, is currently dedicated to, are we spending on trauma funding? Well, when we first, and I may, some may be able to help assist, when we first, I think in 206 or 207, I think we put in the budget like $59 million. Um, and I may be wrong, but that was to, uh, to bolster up some of those existing trauma systems to also reimburse some of the uh, the unpaid uh, bills and so forth. And then in the budget last year, $23 million was put in, but that was supposed to come from the super speeder bill. And um, I think we uh, 
all of us realize that that's probably not going to bring in twenty three million dollars. Is it twenty three million in a? Is the the is has the fifty nine been dedicated every year? And this is twenty three no, million. That was just a one time. One time. And the, the twenty three million is expected to be a one time as a well. One time, as long as it's. Uh, but what I, what I'm asking for, thirty three other states have done this, and others are on, in the process of doing that, realizing that before you ask a business to take on something that's actually a money losing process, and in a trauma center is actually a money losing process. Before you do that, they're not going to make a, a CEO of a hospital is going to move towards programs that's going to make money. And before you do that, you're going to have to assure some type of funding to bring on. And we need about double of what we have now. We have 15, and we probably need about double. So to do that, we really need to have a dedicated funding source each year for that to happen. Of about how much? How much each year, did you say? This would bring in about $82 million. Now, how much did, did, do you think or do you expect that we need each year? $82 million, I think, would uh, get us to the point where we would be able to stabilize the ones we have and begin looking. The Trauma Task Force has got a plan in place of what they want to do, where they want to begin uh, opening new trauma centers and so forth across Georgia to... Uh, we have so many areas where, uh, if you want to call death zones, where you have over a million people in this state that are over uh, an hour away from that golden hour that caregivers say is so important. We have over a million people uh, that aren't close enough to get that type of care. Right now, last year you had 40,000 trauma accidents. Only 10,000 of those were seen in actual trauma center just because uh, of the network inadequacies. Thank you. Um, Chairman Scott, is that you? You wave. In 28, is that anybody? Was no, that you? I'm oh, okay. Uh, Chairman Peek. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Goggins, thank you for bringing this uh, legislation forward, much needed, and uh, look forward to supporting it. Um, could you just walk us through, for the committee purposes, for my educational purpose, too, uh, the accountability that the Trauma Trust Fund has with the General Assembly? Um, Obviously, we're going to give them a whole lot of money um, through this, and um, would you just kind of walk us through how that to is the set To the best, up? to the best of my knowledge, we have set up the Trauma Trust Fund that the monies will go to, and then we have also established a trauma commission, and this trauma commission will be in charge of dispersing the funds will be in charge of carrying out the plan that they have set forth to the General Assembly that they want to do to improve our trauma network and our trauma system. Okay. Is there is there a requirement every year to give an accountability of those funds? Do you know? Uh, I don't know that. Okay. I sure just, don't. Just wanted, okay. um, thank you for bringing forward the forward to supporting it. Uh, Representative Taylor, is that right? Do you have a question? Uh, I think you answered this question before, but I was reading the handout, so if you could say it for me again, I'd appreciate yes. it. Why you limit it to passenger vehicles rather than all vehicles? Mainly because from a standpoint, you have truck operators that may be individual that owns their trucks, but you may have fleets, and that would be almost taxing businesses, and we did not want to get in the business of taxing businesses from this standpoint. So, so I chose to limit it away from, from putting the burdens on a business. Okay. Now, Chairman Scott. Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, Senator, I appreciate you bringing this bill. And it, it, my research, the definition of passenger vehicle, it would include any of the vehicles that only travel inside the state of Georgia. But if, if it was a semi that traveled outside of the state, there's a federal prohibition against uh, a type of additional tax or uh, fee like this, uh, they they operate under interstate uh, regulations, and and that's my recollection. So I be, I believe that even if it was a semi that was only tagged to travel in the state of Georgia, it would pay. And if it was something like a a box delivery van from a uh, a store that it would pay, but that semis that traveled outside of the state would not. Is that? Representative, I'm not aware of that. 
I had just made the decision from a standpoint when we started this not to attach it to the semis just because of a business standpoint. So I don't know the definition of the semi, if it's covered or not. I know, I know that if it travels outside of the state of Georgia, it, it, there's a prohibition against it being uh, taxed by any type of fee or tax increase like this. But I, I believe um, in the definitions when we, when we had the, the bill in the House last year, and I'll double check that, um, that if they were not tagged to travel outside of the, the state, that they would probably pay the fee. Well, uh, I'm not sure what the posture is. That something that the author would entertain? I sure. mean, you feel no, like I'm, that's this might be the last opportunity to do that. Is, this is a Senate resolution that's passed. Mr. There. Chairman, I would be willing to entertain, but I sure don't want anything to. I'm. I'm I think it's fine. I, th I think the language is fine. I think it just, I think it does include, I, I think that the term passenger vehicle does include those other vehicles. So, but you don't think any further clarification is necessary. Maybe I'm, I'm the one confused rather than you. You don't? No, sir. I, I, okay. I think that, I think that the term passenger vehicle is going to include anything under 10 passengers that that is not licensed for travel outside of the state commercially. Okay. Um, Chairman Parsons. Oh, sorry about that. Mm. Chairman, okay. I, just wanted to, I just wanted to ask the Chair, is this the first reading or are we taking this up? This, this? this bill is for consideration of full committee. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Senator Goggins, is this the same bill we passed last year? Or I think with, it is. With some minor changes that were technical changes that were made about the trust fund. Okay. And and did you did you tell us about those changes already? Yes. Exactly what they were? Okay. Um, I don't see any more questions. Does any member of the committee wish to be heard on this proposition? Well, I've got Chairman Scott there wishes to be heard, and Chairman May in a minute. So. Uh, I was just going to move to do pass at the proper time, Mr. Chairman. Okay. That's uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman May. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just, I appreciate, um, Senator, I appreciate your effort. I, I have some concerns with spending this, but allocating this amount of money. I mean, currently we're spending either $59 million in one year or, and then $23 million this year. And we are looking at, over the next 10 years, spending $820 million, you know, $1.64 billion over the next 20 years on trauma funding. I'm not sure what is the appropriate amount of money for us to spend on this. I think everyone recognizes that there is a problem with uh, funding for trauma care around the state. I just, and that just seems like an awful lot of money to put in and have a dedicated funding source. My, my other concern is... Or not, not a concern. I, I know that trauma is also addressed in House Bill 480, which is over in the Senate now, which completely changes the dynamics of how we apply ad valorem taxes to vehicles. Uh, and I, I personally am more, more comfortable with that because we're, we're not just adding a new tax onto something. With, with that bill, we're actually reforming the tax and it, while at the same time allocating a dedicated funding source for trauma care. So me personally, as a Republican and a conservative, I feel you know, much more fiscally speaking comfortable with that type of legislation rather than just adding a new tax on top of everything else. That's just now I respond. Like you, you certainly may. And I understand, but I also consider myself conservative and a Republican, but uh, when you have the, when you're losing needless lives and there is not going to, the, the House Bill 480, great bill, it's not dedicated funding. And when we have, last year we were talking about this as a trauma bill. It would, right now we're not talking about it as a trauma bill, 480, we're talking about it as, an, as a revenue bill, and that's wonderful. We need that bill. But anytime, anything you're going to do to get away from a dedicated funding source, 
in the times that we're in, we're going to find somewhere else to put this money. And saving people's lives is way, way more important than that. Uh, and, and I feel very comfortable of looking my folks in the face and saying I'm giving them a chance to vote on something that's going to save so many lives. I thought um, House Bill 480 put $10 or allocated it's $10. It's not, unless it's, it's a constitutional a amendment, it's not dedicated to, it's just legislative intent. So it's not dedicated. Further inquiry, Chairman May? Thank you, Representative Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I thought this was a first read bill, too, so that's why I only asked one question, even though I had some more concerns. But my main concern, I like the bill, my main concern is that you just limit it to passenger vehicles. What, what, what business, who would be exempt from this, listening to what uh, Chairman Scott was saying about, I guess, semis who travel? Between states, would that apply to, you know, charter buses as well? Any vehicle that carries people, or just semi? Ten passengers or less. So you have a passenger van that's ten vehicle, ten passenger or less, because your vehicles, as they're as they're manufactured, their list of here's how many people this is manufactured for. Mm -hmm. uh, so any vehicle, ten passenger or less, anything over that would not be would not be subject to this. So essentially, like a charter bus wouldn't be no. subject to this. But if I have a a mini bus or I have a transportation company and I have, you know, ten passenger vans, I would that business those vans in my business if, if would be subject to this. Ten the or larger, less. Yes. It just seems two. One, it seems kind of a little arbitrary to me because uh, if you're gonna protect businesses, I would think you'd do all of their vehicles if they're in the transportation business and not just the larger uh, vehicles. Uh, and so, I, you know, while I like the bill, I would, if it's like this, I would probably vote against it just because I think, you know, if it's a charter bus that gets in an accident or if it's a one car, you know, one car, one passenger that gets into the accident, I think they all ought to pay for the trauma care funding because they're all going to take advantage of it at the end of the day. You want to respond to that? Yes. Okay. Chairman Peek. Oh. I me. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Chairman Parsons. My mistake. That's okay. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, you know, I know we kind of following up on uh, Representative May's questioning. I know there has to be some amount of money that, that's needed for this, and uh, I guess I just have some of the same concerns I think that Speaker Richardson had over the last couple of years. But looking at you know looking at the uh, the, the eighty nine ninety million dollars or whatever be raised a year, I mean I know there's got to be some amount of money that that has to be taken in to to establish this trauma you know the trauma uh, care that we need in the state. I mean I know it's needed, even though I must say now in Cobb County, and I'm sure it's different because I am in Metro Atlanta, but I don't think I've ever gotten a call about trauma care. It seems like there's a lot more interest, uh, I mean, that I don't ever hear about in Cobb County. But my question is, though, on a year after year after year, though, I mean, would it, would it really require that much money, which would be, a, I'm sure it would be a growing amount of money year after year. Would it really, I mean, is there anything to, to substantiate that, that, that's, that, that it would require that amount of money year after year after this, if this were, were uh, approved by the voters of the state? I would absolutely say that is the minimum that's going to be required. Now, there may be someone from the Trauma Commission or others here that would like to speak on that behalf, but to be able to stabilize the one we have from a standpoint of the amount of uncompensated care that they have, the amount of money that they're losing right now, and you're talking about trying to double the number of trauma centers. Now, I understand that you probably have never had a call, but this is a big state. And where I'm from, now take a line and draw. There's 15 trauma centers in this state. Take a line and draw it from Augusta through Macon, Columbus. Out of those 15, there's only two below that line. Well, I know there's a reason there's a difference. And people are just, you know, and... Uh, it, it should be, we should have equal access all over this state, and I would hope everyone would be supportive of that. And I understand 
you may have great trauma care where you're from. Uh, but I would say a minimum of the 80 million, if we're going to go forward each year, uh, it would be a minimum. Matt, that's really my question. Yes. It relates to the amount of money. Not, yes. I understand the difference. In the, but it just seems like year after year, taking in the same uh, you know, same amount of money. I know the need would be greater, too, but you would, I would think as the number of vehicles increase, which they will, as, as the population increases, it's going to be an increase in the yeah. amount of money. And, and I hope it would increase because I think it's going to be needed. I think, I think that's probably not going to be enough in the future. Senators, I remember the trauma study committee that uh, that I was on with uh, Senator Staten. Yeah, we it, it's, it's it's well beyond uncompensated care. It's mm -hmm. uncompensated readiness. Readiness uh, cost. If you don't have a trauma event, that does you still have to have that team ready twenty four seven, and that's what trauma is all about. It just does not model to the typical. Um, indemnity reimbursement that we we think of in the insurance markets these right. days for for health care and most of it is a result of what they call blunt trauma which is not likely to take place at home so people from my county who have access to excellent trauma care in macon yes. or people from cobb county and chairman parsons area uh, have excellent trauma care available to them in atlanta but if they're traveling to florida through south georgia they're going to be every much a victim as being outside that golden hour, potentially, as anybody else, regardless of where they live. So it, it is a statewide issue. It is a network that, that's necessary. And, and what we found with, with thoughtful study was that, uh, as I recall, that uh, we're way behind most other states in, in that regard. It truly is life and death, and it truly is in jeopardy of, 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 of non-existence in, in a lot of ways because it does cost uh, so much and, and the 80 million was the very very bottom line estimate as I as I recall but unless that's changed over the summer I've not studied it since then 27 is uh, Chairman Stevens thank you mr. chairman I don't, I don't want to belabor that but I, would you agree that the trauma care system we've got today is 100% voluntary 100% voluntary because most of them are losing a tremendous amount of money and wouldn't you agree, just to follow up, that if unless we can do something to nail down trauma care uh, in a sustainable fashion, that in these economic times, whenever these hospitals are faced with budget cuts that we're laying on them, that this might be one of the ones that they would cut? I am 100% uh, confident that if we do not have dedicated funding, that we're not going to move forward in Georgia with this. It's going to be difficult. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't see any other questions. The uh, chair would recognize uh, Chairman Scott, who asked to be recognized for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I move to pass on SR-277. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Chairman May? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just, well, again, while I appreciate the efforts, I, ha I have more questions than answers at this point. I mean, you know, how would the money be spent? What would uh, who would determine the qualified expenses and what would they be? You know, what is the correct amount of funding necessary? And you know, is there enabling legislation that defines the purpose and the scope of the money that's going to be spent? You know, we, we're we're taking you know again eight hundred twenty million dollars over ten years and one point six four billion over over twenty years. And then every year thereafter, you know, what is the appropriate dollar amount? I mean, this is this is significant. Legislation. I mean, this right. is, and you know, as the funding purpose, as far as trauma care. Who, I mean, who's going? I mean, where is all that information? First of all, you have voted, or from a standpoint, you have a trauma commission that will be overseeing, overlooking this. Who has a plan? They will be the one that will be initiating this program, initiating this plan. Uh, from a standpoint, you need uh, enabling legislation. This is an, a self-executing legislation. It does not need uh, uh, enabling legislation. And we're just going to throw a big pot of money and say, here you go. Oh. We have a group of individuals who are extremely well trained and know exactly what we need in this system, much well, more so than we do. Senator, and I agree with that. This commission has just worked tirelessly, but, but in the bill itself, it's the General Assembly on, on line 24, Chairman May. 
the General Assembly shall provide for the operation of such trust fund and shall specify the trauma care purposes for which such funds are to be expended. So we're not going to just throw money to some uh, agency that's created. It will be under the purview of the elected people of the state, you and I, and whoever else might be here in the years to come. And the Department of Community Health each year will have an annual accounting of the funds and so forth. And is there an effective date? It, if it's a constitutional amendment, it would then be January 1. Those are all good questions, though, and I, I respect your inquiry in that regard. Uh, further discussion, 28, is that Chairman Stevens? Did, any further discussion? We have a motion and a second. Do pass. Uh, seeing no further discussion, all in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Opposed, like sign. Okay, I think the ayes clearly have it. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Committee. Uh, Chairman Peake, um, the bill I ask you about does not have a fiscal note, I'm told, so we'll have to suspend um, action on that. And could I ask Chairman May to take the chair for me, please? I've got one more piece of legislation here to deal with. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If you'd like to present this uh, magnificent proposal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Member, members of the committee, I bring before the committee IRC update, which is House Bill 1139. This is our traditional update that every accountant that's preparing taxes around the state are waiting on our action uh, to, to take place. Uh, for those of you that are new to the committee or, or new to this process, since Georgia income taxation is taken from uh, off of your federal adjust adjusted gross income, it's incumbent upon us to incorporate in our tax code every year the changes made that we select to, to incorporate in our tax code, the changes that are made in the Internal Revenue Service Code. That's what House Bill 1138 seeks to do. There were five major pieces of legislation passed by the federal government in 2009, including the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, the Workers' Home Ownership and Business Assistance Act, the Military Spouses Residency Relief Act, the Department of Defense Appropriations Act, and the Haiti Relief Public Law. This bill takes into account, one way or another, most all of those major federal acts that dealt with the Internal Revenue Service Code. I'll point out to the committee, one of the, the largest ones is Section 179 has been increased by the federal government to a deduct deductibility of 250000 over prior year's deductibility at 125. What Section 179 does is allow business, especially small business, to, to deduct in the year of purchase of equipment purchased for use in business, in other words, business equipment. I personally think that's one of the best job creation and economic development uh, sections we have in the whole tax law because it encourages businesses to invest in themselves and their assets. And then employment is typically antecedent there too. So we will be adopting the increase to $250,000 a year deduction available up to 250 to our, our, our businesses here in Georgia, just like in the IRC. We're also adopting the Haitian Relief Tax efforts in the code so that if you made a donation to the Haitian Relief Act even in 2010, this allows you to deduct it against your 2009 return. Um, we're adopting expansion of seven uh, section 529 and, and the non-taxability of COBRA premiums for insurance transfers where people who are laid off or lose their jobs or otherwise uh, maybe out of work temporarily, they can get COBRA health insurance benefits and the deductibility thereof. I'll also tell you the main issues that we are not adopting that were adopted in the federal code that, frankly, I just don't think we can afford, one of which came out of the... Um, American Recovery and Reinvestment Act in November of 2009 when that was renewed having to do with unemployment insurance paid by the federal government. A renewal was also done that allowed the people that had net operating losses, people or corporations or businesses, 
that had net operating losses under federal statute could now carry those losses back five years. We had a fiscal note done on that in Georgia. If we were to adopt that, it would cost our budget $180 million this year. We can take back losses from NOLs under current Georgia revenue law by two years, and I think that will have to probably suffice given the budget restraints that we're under. So we looked at that for for a long time and, and, and dealt with that issue uh, accordingly. I just don't think in this dire economy that we're in that we could afford to do that. I'd love to be able to offer that to our businesses at NOL carry back, but you also should know that if the two years isn't good enough on a carry back, you can still carry it forward at literally indefinitely. So it's not a loss of the potential deductions, it's just the year in which the application is valid. The other major issue that we're not going to be able to adopt is the debt forgiveness uh, uh, issue that's in 108I of the Internal Revenue Service Code. I, I realize these are not sizzling events, these are not things we talk about every day. But believe it or not, forgiveness of a legitimate debt is, is considered income to the forgiven. Uh, and what's happened in this economy with all the foreclosures that are going on out there is when properties are foreclosed and, and, and there are balances left on the debt that are written off by the banking institutions, for IRS tax purposes, that's income to the recipient of the forgiveness. What the federal law allowed to do was a five-year installment plan on dealing with a taxation that was solely attributable to the forgiveness. Again, with a fiscal note in Georgia that we thought that was going to be $141 million or something dollars against this budget year, although I will tell you that our commissioner and our folks in the tax area have agreed to expand our installment uh, arrangements that we make with honest taxpayers that are really trying to pay their taxes that are really victims of, of, of the economy and that can demonstrate like they can now under installment plans that if they were just given a little more time to deal with it, they could pay it. And I expect we'll have a letter type ruling or, or a letter agreement with the department saying that, that with that criteria being accomplished that we can demonstrate that if we had, say, two or three years to pay this off, we probably will be able to do like three-year installment plans up to three year instead of one year, which is what we're currently under policy uh, uh, bound to. So uh, under those circumstances, many of these debt forgiveness issues are not voluntary. They certainly are uh, typically imposed upon victims of, of this economy that tried to do it the right way their whole lifetime and just, just fell victim like so many of our fellow Georgians and our great friends have. And it, it's a tearful experience to watch people that try so hard, especially our small businesses, to do it right and do it honestly and, and watch them fail just because of circumstances beyond their control. I'm assured by our Revenue Department that we're going to make adequate provisions for those kind of folks, and I ask the committee to uh, favorably uh, move on this legislation so we can move it forward and give our accountants out there something to work with so we can get people filing their taxes and paying more revenue that we desperately need. But I'll also be happy to yield any questions, members of the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for that in-depth and, and very thorough explanation of, uh, of this proposal. You've, you've done such a, a fabulous job that no one – you've dazzled everyone to the point where they have no questions. So at, at this point, I uh, okay, have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of passage of HB 1138, say aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh. Having no further business, this meeting is adjourned.